Hey guys, this is Mac Kids in the War. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an application that I call Lottery. This application will come up with 10 dates that are 7 days apart starting from today's date and then we'll come up with lottery numbers for each date. So um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you the new things that you're going to learn are how to create a secondary class and use that class in other classes. I'm going to show you how to use NSDate and I'm going to show you how to do a random number as well as a few more math things. So I'm going to open up Xcode. I'm going to go to File, New Project, Cocoa Application, and I'm going to call it Lottery. Okay, now under Classes, I'm going to want to create a new class, Cocoa Objective C class, and I'm going to call it App Controller. And App Controller is what we're going to link up with all our Interface Builder stuff. It's going to have the IB Actions and the IB Outlets. Now we're going to create a new class called Lottery Entry. This is going to be what one entry is. So it's going to have a date in it and stuff like that. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to make an int first number, int second number, int third number, and I'm going to make an ns calendar date. date. Okay, so you guys probably know kind of more or less the syntax of this, especially if you watched our Java lessons a while ago. The way it works for functions is um, a lot different than Java though, but the way it works for variables is the same. So every single one of these variables acts as a private variable. So there's no way for other external classes to set those. So we want a way for them to set it. So here we're going to have another void. And we're going to call it set date. And then the first parameter right here that we specify is going to be an NS calendar date, new date. Now you guys probably know the syntax of voids more or less, but how do you do multiple parameters? Well, basically the equivalent of let me just show you void foo foo one foo two and then you could refer to one and two and there is a lot different. The way it works here is you would do the first parameter just is the function name colon and then the first parameter. The second parameter you have to give it a whole new name. So I'm going to make it first number and then int first. Now I'm going to make another parameter, second number. I'm going to make an int second. And then I'm going to say third number int third. Okay, so this is very wide function declaration. And the cool thing we can do with this is we can just hit enter a few times between each parameter to space it out a little bit, make it a little less wide and a little taller. And so that's pretty cool. And so now it fits on one line. So now we're going to make an NS string declaration that they will be able to call that's a function called get string version. Okay? And then the last void is going to be deallocate. And that's just going to be used for um, not having memory leaks and stuff. So we're going to copy all these three functions and we're going to implement them in our .m. So, paste this here. And let's start it out like this. Pretty cool. And in here, we're going to do a few simple functions. So, for the set date, you can probably guess what we're going to do. We're just going to say date equals new date first number 
equals first, second number equals second, third number equals third, because they're passing in variables called first, second, and third. Okay, so that's easy for that function. The next function, get string version, we're just going to return an ns string that is like the date in text and then the entry in text. So I'm going to return right here because this is an ns string. The equivalent of this in Java would be something like ns string foo return whatever. Um, so this is like the equivalent of that. So I'm going to want to return an ns string. And there's a really easy way to make an ns string that has a format. You don't have to do ns string alloc init with format. You can just do left bracket ns string space string with format. And that prevents memory leaks as well. So in the format, we're going to put a number, then a slash, then a number, then a slash, then another number. And so the numbers are going to be like the month or the day, the month, and the year, or whatever. The month, day, and year. And then a hyphen, just to space it out. And then a number, a number, and a number. And those numbers are going to be first number, second number, third number. So now, as the first number, before the first slash, we're going to say date, month of year. So left bracket, date, space, month of year, right bracket. And that'll get the month of the date that has been set. Then I'm going to say date day of week. No, day of month. Because date is actually a variable we have declared up here that this function sets. So luckily we'll have a date. It might not be today's date, but it's going to be a date that we're going to print. Then we're going to do date year of common era. Then we're going to do first number second number, third number. And this method is very, very too much wide. So we're going to space it out a little bit once again. I'm just going to do an enter here, new line here, and presto. So there we go. So now this is going to look something like, like 9, 11, 2001, then numbers, and so forth. So that's going to work well. And then deallocate is just going to be really easy. Date release. Because date is an NS calendar date, and release just says, okay, I'm not going to use date anymore, so please, if, if it's not being used, just, just get rid of it. And so that's how I'm doing that. So now... In app controller, we're going to import lottery entry.h. So this way we can declare a lottery entry. Now, another new thing we're going to learn in this lesson is arrays. And an array, in this case, we're going to do an ns mutable array, which is an array that you can add stuff to, so uh, you know, delete stuff from, and you know, mess around with and edit after it's been initialized. So we're going to declare an ns mutable array, and we're going to call it entries. And normally in that, we are going to put something like 10 lottery entry classes that have different dates and different numbers. And then we're going to do, let me just see, look at my notes, an IB outlet for, in this case, an ns text field that um, I'm going to be using. So this is going to be called entry text. I'll call it entry text for now. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to add one IB action of generate generate new numbers ID center. Okay, and so we can just implement this one ID action. Pretty simple. So in here is where all the magic's going to go and everything's going to come together perfectly.